in this particular section the topic of the modes is being discussed and uh, how association is vital for helping us to become liberated so i'll talk about this in three parts first are what are the modes what are they and then how much are they controllable are we completely controlled by them can we control them to some extent and then what role does association play in that in helping us go beyond the modes that influence us the, the modes are a concept that is talked about primarily in the sankhya school of thought and we could take three metaphors to understand the modes and each of them talks about different aspects of the modes so daivi ya esha gunamai mama maya duratya krishna says in 714 that maya is made up of the modes so we could say the modes are like colors if you are watching a tv screen then everything that comes on a tv screen or movie screen is just made of three color pixels but it is a very sophisticated illusion that comes up so when we talk about the mode as colors they are basically like the building blocks of material existence and when we talk of them as building blocks of material existence they can't be changed they are what they are hmm? so this feature of modes is external to us like we say a particular place is in a particular mode like a forest may be in the mode of goodness a bar may be in the mode of ignorance so this is a feature of the world so the modes at one level are the building blocks of existence and in that sense like you, if colors for some tv the tv screen or tv image is built of three color pixels that's one aspect of the modes now another way to understand the modes mm, is that the modes if we consider colors normally speaking if we see a tv screen illusion you now it's primarily related with our gyan indriyas we are taking it we are seeing we are hearing but it's not that we do anything in relationship with the tv screen isn't it so it's okay we just passively responding of course we may get excited we may get alarmed but we if we get alarmed that doesn't affect anybody on the tv screen actually so for us when we interact with the world if we, the soul is here and we could say the subtle body the mind is here the body is here this is the conditioned soul so our interaction is three level it is through the gyan indriyas the knowledge acquiring senses it is also through the karma indriyas we act on the world so the modes you could say in another sense are like forks on a road that means if when i am going on a particular road if the road is constructed okay there's a left there's a right and there is a straight then i have to choose among the three options now i cannot suddenly go into the air if there is no uh, northeast i cannot go in the northeast so it's this aspect of the modes is like pre defined set of choices hmm? so this is how do we respond when the modes act upon us hmm? and and the modes act on our gyan indriyas they act also on our karma indriyas prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashah so the three modes they they provide us a set of options now this is slightly different from the common now in both of these cases if we consider like a tv or a video game in a tv we are just watching in a video game we are also playing so if we consider a video game example over here in a video game the player has to choose but the player's choices are set between a particular range of options hmm 
So that's all that the kills you. So video game where we have a set of choices that we can make. But the video game exists out there. I am here. I can choose to play it. I can choose not to play it. But the modes don't just exist out there presenting us illusions. The modes, the most common metaphor is ropes. They don't just exist out there. They pull us. They pull us in particular directions. And at the ropes, there are many verses. Nibad Nati 14.5 in Krishna introduces the modes. Sattvam Rajasthamayati Gunaha Prakriti Sambhava Nibad Nanti Mahabaho. They bind us. They pull us in particular directions. So this is... This is where there is a certain amount of impelling comes in. It's like in the first two options, okay, we are going along the road. There's a, there's a shop and outside the shop there are a set of sweets being displayed or a set of wares being displayed. It's up to us to go in there or not. But imagine if in that shop there is somebody with a lasso and they throw the lasso in, zoop, pull us inside. So the modes have this third element also. Hmm? that they are like ropes which pull us in particular directions. And that's why our bondage, Krishna says, Asha Pasha Shatair Baddhaha, we are all bound. But our bonds, they are not like a prisoner's shackles. Now when a prisoner is shackled, the prisoner gets tied to one particular place and the prisoner can't move. So our bonds are more like a puppeteer's strings. The puppeteer is making the puppet move. And the puppet may be moving very fast also. But the puppet is not in control. So, the bonds are like this for us. So, the, the modes are like ropes which make us dance. So, when Rajoguna takes us over, we act in a particular way. When Tamoguna takes us over, we act in a particular way. So, now, among these three, the first and the second... These will continue to exist. Urdha Mula Madha Shaka Mashvatham Prahur Avyayam. The tree of material existence is imperishable. So these two aspects of the modes are never going to change. Now we can say society can change and in some society the modes of Tamoguna may be more. In some society the modes of Sattvaguna might be more. That's possible. But overall these three modes are going to exist. And the corresponding options are going to exist. But the third option... So the starting question was one and two. These are uncontrollable for us, largely speaking. Hmm? But the third is what is controllable. And that's why in that same Urdhva Mula Madha Shakham, it is says that Asanga Shastrena Drudhena Chitva. Asang, it's like a with the sword, with the weapon, with the axe of detachment that cut off this tree. So we don't, and Chakravarti Path explains in the commentary that we can't actually break, cut off the tree itself. We can cut off our bondage to the tree. That we are bound to the tree. Now this word, Asanga, Asanga Shastre Nadrudhe Chitva, in 15.4 it comes. It is very strikingly related with the 13.2. Purusha Prakriti Stohi Bhungte Prakritim Jan Gunan Karanam Gunasangosya so guna sangha and ga. that it is guna sangha which binds and it is a sangha which will freeze so it is to the extent we are attached to the extent we have the desire to enjoy bhungte prakriti jan gunan to that extent we get bound so now uh, <coughs> the modes so in that sense these three features if we talk about what they are doing is the modes influence us externally in terms of providing us options. And the mode impel influence us internally in terms of pushing us towards certain options. Now, then do we really have free will? And how much is the range of our free will? So basically, when we say the modes push us internally, how do they push us internally? It is that they impel desires inside us. So base, say if a person is passing by a bar hmm, and that person is an alcoholic, 
it's possible that the person may not drink but it's highly unlikely because the bar exists out there and inside the influencer rajoguna tamaguna is there and that will put push that person so in one sense the modes are like a very sophisticated prison wherein from outside there are forces that allure us and from inside there are forces that allure us so what is the way out now there are many aspects to it but the key is that the what do the modes do they do many things but they we can say one focus is they influence our desires hmm? they trigger certain desires within us and if the modes are triggering desires within us how can we have an alternative desire so the modes are outside the modes are inside can we have a desire is it even conceivably possible to have a desire different from what the modes are pulling us modes are prompting us toward if not then there is no hope for us to be liberated so the key thing over here is that it is very rare that a person is influenced only by one mode entirely all the time that a person may prominently mean tamaguna but even a tamasic mu person may have some rajasic times sometimes may even have some movements of sattva so that's why the three modes krishna says that they are in a competition rajas tamay sattvam rajas tamay no that what rajas tamascha vibhuya sattvam bhavati bharata so there is there is competition among the modes itself so what happens is and therein lies our opportunity it's like you know when shivaji maharaj was trying to build the hindvi swaraj you know, it was india had been ruled by multiple islamic rulers at different times so there were fights among various islamic rulers only and shivaji maharaj used that opportunity you no know, he attacked one muslim ruler of the lvigar and then the next one the next one and finally most of his life he had to fight with aurangzeb who was the prominent ruler over there so for us the modes are fighting with each other and sometimes within the fight among the modes an opening comes for us so vishwa <clears throat> chakadakur in his uh, madhuri kadambani is what is the origin of bhakti is it punya just punya doesn't lead to bhakti but punya if a person is pious that is more likely to make a person go to places where there'll be devotees where a person is more likely to get the influence of bhakti so basically we could say our desire so this is the last part i'm going to talk about how does association affect Uh, us and how does it open the doors to go beyond the modes so normally we think of desires as linear hmm. linear means that i am here some sense object is here so i look at the sense object hmm, and i get the desire for that object so if we see something hey that's a gulab jamun i want to eat it that's a pakoda i want to pakode ne mujhe pakad liya hai <laughs> so the idea is that we normally our desires are linear and that is true but fortunately for us all our desires are not necessarily linear our desires are also triangular triangular means that i am a person here and this is another person so by seeing the object i may not get the desire but by seeing someone else interacting with that object maybe enjoying that object i may get that desire i think i may have given this example when i first went to australia and devotee had invited me to the home for prasad and then they said for dessert we have got baklava so how many of you know what is a baklava i love you of you so anyway to the indian ear at least to my maharashtrian ear then sound of bakla bakla what doesn't sound very sweet so i said maybe later there's another devotee who had come with me 
and he said, yeah, I would like to have. And he took the baklava and he was eating, closing his eyes and relishing it. When I saw him, I said, can I also have one? So it is that, that there's no linear desire, but there was a triangular desire. That's why companies spend so much on endorsements. Now, generally for Rajasic objects, often the linear desires come up because they look visibly attractive. But for sattvic objects, hmm, the linear desires may not come up. Not many people just pass by a gym and think, oh, I want to start exercising. But if they say somewhere coming from the gym, a friend is looking very healthy, looking very fit, hey, maybe I should also start doing some exercising. Not many people see a Bhagavad Gita and even if they get a Bhagavad Gita, I want to read it. People take Bhagavad Gita as it is and keep it as it is. But if they meet someone who is filled with insight and joy and excitement about the studying the about studying the Bhagavad Gita, they think, what is there in this? I want to know more about it. And that's how they become attracted. So for us, desire for Krishna, it will primarily be awakened through association. So somehow within the fold of the modes, we are under the control of the modes. It's not as suddenly we can come out of the modes. But somehow, while we are within the control of the modes, if somehow we can get to associate with the devotee. And in that association, the devotee injects a spiritual desire within us. Then that is what moksha dwaram apavritam. That is what opens the doors to liberation. So now that is where the expertise of a devotee is, if we consider sattva, rajas, tamas to be different lanes in, this, in the pathway of the world. So now, different people, a person might be going on sattva, a person might be going on rajas, a person might be going on tamas. So ideally, if we consider a devotee, especially exalted devotee, is transcendental. But the devotee extends themselves to manifest the presence in all the modes. Like Prabhupada went to America. There, America at that time was considered degraded by traditional Indian people. But the hippies were considered degraded even by Americans. But Prabhupada went there. And Prabhupada made himself available over there. Now, the hippies were not all tamasic. It is very careful to understand this, that Many of them were spiritual seekers, but they had been misled into believing that drugs will take us high. Drugs will make us spiritual high. So Prabhupada came in their pathway and he elevated them. So Jagannatha Swami, Nayanapathagami Bhavatume. So our Nayanapath, our eyes will go where they go according to the modes. The modes that are influencing us internally, the modes that are present in the world outside. But if we have, if we are somehow fortunate, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavana Jeev. Then, Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. So, on whatever path we are going because of the modes, somehow there's an interaction with the devotee. And if that happens, say, somebody wants to succeed in life, you know, I want to be famous, I want to be wealthy, I want to be powerful, I want to be successful material. Now, we may say, this is such a person has no spiritual desire. But if that person meets a devotee and that devotee is giving wisdom, maybe just sattvic wisdom about how to be successful in life, but with some spiritual connection, that will trigger. Somebody might be starving and their only thought is food, but if they come across somebody distributing food for life, they have no interest in Krishna, their despair is only, I want, I'm hungry, I need some food, but they come across. So that is compassion. So in one sense, we are all going on the path determined by the modes. But if somehow we encounter devotees, association over there, that that association can trigger spiritual desire within us. And those who accept that spiritual desire, I'll conclude with the last point. Prabhupada says, what is required for someone to come to Krishna consciousness? Prabhupada says one needs to be fortunate, he says in the of instruction, and intelligent. 
so fortunate means to get the opportunity that okay many people live and die without even coming to know that there is a higher purpose to life there is a better way to live to get the opportunity is fortune to take the opportunity is intelligence now we cannot force people to become intelligent if people don't have the opportunity then we should see that that is my problem if people don't take the opportunity that is their problem we can't do anything about that so although the modes are influencing increasingly in today's world but even within the influence of the modes more and more people are exploring and if somehow in their explorations they can encounter krishna and especially encounter krishna in a way that triggers some spiritual desire within them then their spiritual journey can begin and that is what shri prabhupada did in the most extraordinary of situations and that is what we all can try to do according to our capacities so i'll summarize what i discussed i talked about the modes and how association can free us from the modes so i talked about three parts what are the modes so we talked about three metaphors the first was the modes are like colors in a tv screen or they are like menu options in a video game so these are in one sense beyond our control hmm. but then the third is that they are also like ropes they pull us so their control can either increase or the control can decrease so that is up to us and within that the second point i discussed was that the modes as far as the externals how much can we change it Maybe to some extent we can we can try to rearrange society have social reform by which modes of passion ignorance their manifestation less prominent but that's not much in our control but the internal influence that we can change to some extent and that is where the within there's a competition among the modes there is a fight among the modes and in their competition there is a opening for us so while maybe sattva is manifesting if that time we cross the path with a devotee and then what happens to devotee association is our desires which are normally linear externally i see an object internally the desire comes up and i get trapped but desires can also be triangular and it is association that can give us the fortune that wherever we may be in the mode we get a opportunity to have some spiritual desire injected in our consciousness and if we are intelligent enough to take that opportunity then we can be freed from we can gradually take the journey to become freed from the modes thank you very much hare krishna is there any quick question yes from see the competition between the modes say for example somebody is a student in college now among students there is a tug of war in their heart now one is i want to be an enjoyer the other is i want to be an achiever and now i want to enjoy means i want to go to parties i want to drink i want to have fun others i want to be achiever you know i want to become famous i want to become wealthy i want to get a big job now neither of these may be spiritual maybe they want to enjoy they want to achieve also so that they want to enjoy later you know hey, if i come first in class if i get a good job then i'll get a more attractive partner so that achievement may also be for enjoyment but still you can say just wanting to enjoy in the moment that is tamasic not worrying about anything else hmm? but achieving that is also not spiritual at all and it may not be much sattvic also because the the achievement is also for material enjoyment only but still okay now i want to do well in this exam so i'm not going to go for any parties so there is a competition between rajas and tamas over there and while from a spiritual perspective rajas and tamas can be equated or they get, they are both considered something which you have to transcend but bhakti nath thakur says that you know we should not equate the two from a material perspective from a material perspective rajas can actually be a antidote for tamas which is like a poison mm. from material perspective especially after i started traveling abroad 
you know, I meet Americans and many of them have such uh, troubled uh, childhood. You know, maybe the parents were dr on drugs and things like that. Not all Americans are like that. They're conservative parents who take care of the children very well. But most conservatives never come to our movement. It's mostly liberals who come to our movement in the West. So they have had very difficult childhood. So an Indian parent may not have anything spiritual, may not be interested in spirituality themselves, may not be interested in the child's spirituality. But if their child is sick, they will move heaven and earth to have their child treated. A tamasic parent is so stoned on drugs that they don't even know that their child exists. And the child has to fend for themselves. So from this life's perspective, rajasic and tamasic parenting is a universe of difference. So there is, in that way, a competition between the modes also. Somebody is an alcoholic and they have a family. The urge to drink is there, but he says, no, I have to take care of my family, I have to take care of my children. Although I want to drink, no. That person has a sense of responsibility, even material responsibility. That Rajoguna, if it can triumph over Tamoguna, then it helps. So in the Scandinavian countries, that's what they did. One of the ways they found addiction is, whenever somebody is a drug addict, they previously they put them in jail for using drugs. They said that, and nobody wants to employ somebody who's a drug junkie. But the government said that we will, if you employ somebody who has a record of using drugs, we will pay half their salary. So now what happened is, even from material perspective, somebody just gets a sense of meaning in life. I can hold a job. I can do something worthwhile with my life. Then maybe after that I can have a relationship, I can have a family, all those things come afterwards. People, even if they don't have Paramartha, they need some Artha in their life. Artha is not just money, it's some meaning in life. So once people get a sense, okay, I can do something of value, then many people are able to fight off addiction. Not everybody, sometimes it's very vicious. But my point is, Rajas can also help somebody to fight against Tamas. So sometimes Rajas rises in the person, only Tamas rises in the person. Sometimes generally by 35, 40, 45, many people have what they call a midlife crisis or a midlife reflection. Now, I've been chasing material things. Is this really meaningful for me? Do I want something more in my life? So that's, in Rajas, some sattva is coming. What is really of value? What matters in life? They may still not be interested in Krishna, but they still are thinking, what is meaningful in life? So like that, there's a competition between the modes. Okay? So thank you very much. Granthraj, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Brindaki Chara Sitai Gaur Premanande